Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're all having a great Friday. You're looking forward to the weekend. Your first couple weeks of classes have been relaxing. You're learning lots. You're happy to be back on campus here. Um, this is another NCSU Libraries Twitch stream. Today we're going to be pretty chill. We're going to be hanging out, writing a little bit of code uh, for the 3D web. So I have, my name is Colin Keenan. Uh, I'm a staff member here at the NC State Libraries. I work on virtual reality, uh, 3D web development, just about anything that has humans and computers interacting in unique ways. Um, and I'm pretty, pretty tired after a long week. I imagine most of you are too. So today we're gonna be uh, doing a little bit of web development. We're gonna make some cool um, stuff within our web browser, a little bit of video game looking stuff. Figured this uh, scene we have in front of us here uh, is something I've been picking at for the last couple weeks just in my free time. It's a nice little ocean uh, scene with a shader. Drive around. Um, so I was thinking maybe we'd start out at least the first hour here, kind of picking at, picking at this example. This is uh, built off of a uh, really beautiful uh, web shader uh, implementation by Ada Rose Cannon, uh, who's one of the central developers uh, for WebXR, the WebXR API. Um, she's really one of my, my favorite web developers who I follow their work. and. Um, so I think uh, for some other streams we've done in the past, we've really gotten to the technical nitty gritty of how web development and 3D web development works. I figure today we'll just kind of do a little bit of coding and uh, implement stuff as we go and try to make some cool looking things. So uh, I'm gonna get right to it. Uh, obviously hop in chat. I'm happy to uh, talk with anybody who's tuning in today, but otherwise we're just gonna be hanging out and uh, maybe listen to a little music and make some stuff in the web. So uh, I'm going to be using a website called Glitch today. Um, I'll leak all of my uh, Glitch projects that I'm working on right now here on stream. Um, but uh, this will let us do some live development um, right here within the web browser that everybody can see. So I've got a, a link there. I'll drop it right into our chat. Um, and you can check out the progress of this website as, uh, as it comes together. So here, I'll show you what I got so far though. So this is a uh, WebXR uh, page, you know, it's a virtual reality, a mixed reality experience right through the web browser. Um, can, um, can work on a, a wide range of different devices, you know, mobile devices, VR headsets, desktop browser, I'm on a desktop today. Um, and I'm looking at it through Firefox browser. Um, and these are all um, obviously devices that make up a really high percentage of uh, web browsing devices in circulation these days. And so we want to be able to make uh, cool experiences that deploy through the web to all those different pieces of hardware. Um, so I'm using a web library called A-Frame to be able to do that. And uh, I'll give a, a shout out to uh, uh, Ada Rose Cannon, who is really um, responsible for a lot of this. So, um, drop that in the chat too. Yeah, it's probably pretty tough to read right now, huh? Maybe something like that'll be a little easier. Okay, let's get to it though. So, one of the cool things about A Frame that it has a built-in uh, scene editor. So take a look at what this looks like in the editor. I got a little shader artifact there that actually is pretty cool. Um, and it's in the browser. There you go. So I can look at my scene um, as a um, as a scene rather than just as a collection of line of code. Um, and you can see we got a lighthouse model loaded in here. Uh, we got some simple geometric shapes as well. Um, and I have a little cube that can be moved around. I'm using the WSAD controls and can pass through objects right now, it looks like. Um, so I'm just 
just driving my happy little boat around. And it looks like it is able to pass through stuff. So that's cool. Um, we can work with that. So maybe we'll uh, make a little bit more of a lively scene. So um, let's make that. <laughs> So I want to go into Tinkercad and do a little bit of fuss. And the first thing I see that I really want to change is this boat. Um, last time I was working on this, I was able to, um, yeah, build this ghost boat. Um, but it doesn't look very much like a boat right now. So let's go find um, within Tinkercad some uh, some possibilities. I'm gonna. Tinkercad is a really cool site if you're um, just getting into 3D modeling. You know, it's not really built for games. It's more built for uh, CAD and for 3D printing. But I find it like one of the when I'm not trying to make stuff that's like supposed to look like a, a high end game. I often go into Tinkercad to model the stuff I need to make. So. Um, Search 3D designs for boat, little boat. Um, there's like a really cool toy boat, little high poly. I, I really like the idea of using the 3D print um, boat, the like boaty or whatever it's called, um, that tests uh, the strength of 3D prints. Uh, here's a cool low poly little motor boat. So I'll copy and tinker this. Um, got that. Hit them with an ungroup. We can add our own little boat name here. Um, anybody got a, a little boat name? I was thinking like the uh, SS Tuffy, maybe something like that. Like um, there's a tool in here to write. We'll do that. Tell my uh, my Tinkercad skills have atrophied. Here we go. Yeah. And then <laughs> yeah, definitely the technically sound way you're supposed to do this. with a group. Um, let's see. I don't know if I'll like how that looks, but um, and then uh, 
nice little color coordination here. Ungroup. Make this like red. We'll make this uh, white. Like that. White. And black. Maybe we'll make them both black, actually. Doing my best to get the little state brand in there. Hmm. We'll do an export. Yeah, so much school spirit. Uh, I like GLB files. I think they work well as a web 3D model, uh, particularly if you WebXR. Uh, you can't see it, but right now it just popped up with a um, the viewer, let's. It's a really good. Um, oh, actually, here, we'll. Um, this is cool. Anybody who's watching that does uh, 3D work, there's a, the 3JS editor, is like one of the best things to look, best places to look at 3D models online, in my opinion. Because um, it uses WebGL and uh, uses an implementation of 3JS, so it like does a really good job of uh, looking at how something will look in a uh, web rendering environment. So here's a little 3D model we just made. That's pretty cool. I can work with it. Um, so that just verified that this is good to move into um, our project. Yeah, thank you for the link. Yeah, I should have should have provided that. Yeah, yeah. What's really cool is like um, lots of stuff that you can do within Blender. Um, you know, like your right on that line of is it a real time engine? Is it a game engine? Is it a um, like a three D editor? Um, you can kind of jump that gap uh, within the web browser using three JS editor. So you can put physics into the editor there. You can. Um, you can have animations running. You can have physical animations running. Um, I think people have like recreated entire games within the 3JS editor too. I, I know there's like a demo that shows Brick Breaker and Pac-Man maybe. Um, pretty cool in my opinion. The web is uh, my favorite. I love being online. Okay, let's call this SS Tuffy. Drop that into our project. Um, Here's a download link for anybody who wants that model that we just made. If you're watching this stream afterwards, that link will still work. Um, once like an hour from now, I decide I hate that boat into the stream. I guess you got to keep watching to find out if I delete that file. Although if you're watching this later, you already know I would have deleted the file if you click the link and it's not there. Wow. Um, we will go back to our little editor. So you can see I already have um, one 3D model in here. I'm doing that by having like an entity within the scene, which I'm giving it the component of being a GLTF model. Um, so like it's just a, I just like defined a cube and then I'm telling the cube like, hey, you're not actually a cube. You're actually this GLTF model. Um, yeah, it's, <laughs> have you, I, it's like that, um, I forget that movie where they uh, do time travel, but the time machine is just a big cardboard box. They just say, oh, we're not going to make a prop for the time machine. But they are super diligent about keeping all of the time travel logic straight. I never remember. It's, I always want to say it's Looper, but it's not. That's the uh, Bruce Willis movie. Um, Time travel logic is hard. But yeah, so I'm gonna do the same thing here with like telling this um, 
telling this boat that it's actually a GLCF model. So like I've got this entity called Boat Guy, I guess I named it. Um, pretty, I mean, silly name, but it worked because I immediately knew what it was. Uh, I'm gonna tell it you're actually a GLTF model. And uh, that link that I just dropped into the chat, which uh, is my hosted file, I'm gonna say, hey, you're actually, but hey, Boat Guy, you're actually this. Um, and there's our SS Tuffy. It's like way too big. Um, so let's make it a tenth of a size. Let's make it a, a 20th of a size. Let's make it a 40th of its natural size. It's like getting there. Okay, so I'm driving Tuffy around. Uh, it's pretty weird that he that it doesn't seem to care about directionality. That's like a little odd seeming to me. It's actually am I did I build something in for this? Yeah, I gave it look control, so it looks in whatever direction. Uh, so it's just navigating really slowly. Uh, let's give it a neutral rotation, see how that acts. And also let's lower that size to 0 0.0, what do we think? Like 0 0.015, if 0 0.025 was coming out to the size we were just at. Yeah, it's, um, it's just a tiny lighthouse. Um, yeah, they'll, it's just far away. So I think we need to sink it into the water a little. So X, Y, it needs to go down in the Y, so like 0.5. It's a little low. I feel like SS Tuffy's taking on water right now. Okay, that's progress, that's progress. Let's, uh, we'll grab that entire entity. And we'll replace boat guy. Okay, so this is like our new standard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is a nice little piece of color coordination. Okay, SS Tuffy doesn't seem to have, it seems to be a very, like a pontoon boat. So this is like an accident. I don't really know what caused this, but I like this effect way more. Like that feels way more natural to me. I'm gonna get rid of these, um, just like shape meshes now. Um, and let's also do a little cleanup. I need to manage my win window a little bit here. Sorry, sorry, I'm fixing it, I'm fixing it. Don't be mad, please. There we go. Still a little, a little syntax cleanup, so. Make this a little more human readable. And if you're saying, wow, what's this crazy code? Um, all of how the syntax I'm using um, is defined at aframe.io. I don't know if our mod wants to maybe grab that link and give it a HTTPS um, so that it makes it a little more clickable, but um, it's all defined there. It's, um, it's a really cool open source project that, um, if you'd like to sign up for one of our Getting Started with WebXR development workshops, uh, we just listed four of them throughout the semester. Um, so we'll begin together in 
kind of going over the nitty gritty of how to set up scenes like this um, so that you can have quickly editable VR scenes within the web browser like this. And as you can see, I haven't touched a VR headset yet. Oh, it is clickable just like that? Cool, okay. Um, that's good to know. It's uh, It behaves more than, I'm so used to Zoom, doesn't allow links without the HTTPS. Um, but it's pretty, it's a nice little usable sandbox using the web like this, right? So if you wanna learn the, the basics of what we're doing here, uh, feel free to attend one of our workshops. Um, so it doesn't look like I have a name on this lighthouse and that's gonna over time confuse me. So we'll do ID equals lighthouse fella. Um, the reason I don't name that lighthouse is because um, I like having like a contrived ID for things so that I have to go back and actually see what they're called because then if I name something else lighthouse, like if one thing gets to be named lighthouse, everything, every name can only be used once. And so I always try to go a little off the beaten path with my naming of stuff just so it makes me consciously think about um, what's going on there. Oh, geez. There is that. And we got some other meta stuff that we don't need in here. That's actually inaccurate. This goes to, let's find out. Oh, it's just a capture of the original versions. Yeah, and to make sure I'm giving full disclosure, this is built off of a demo by someone else, as we mentioned at the top of the um, stream here. Okay, so we got that. Go through, and I don't think we need these boxes and spheres anymore. So I'm going to delete all of them. See the effect it has over there. Neat. We just have Tuffy, the puppy at the bottom corner. Oh, in Glitch, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this is cool. This is like the update um, puppy. Um, they're like constantly adding new um, templates and features within Glitch. There's actually, I heard there's a new Glitch feature um, to do a like single page website that's supposed to be really, really good um, if you're like, starting a website and uh, doing it from scratch. There is a new uh, website set up, like single page website set up syntax that they have a template built in here for. So it's um, worth checking out. Um, cool. So we got that working. I want to put smokestacks. I want to make these smokestacks active. So I'm going to you can see um, I don't actually know how to do this. I'm just learning in real time how to do it. Um, but there is a particle system. Um, yeah, this particle system component. So let's see the demo for it. I think we're like... Uh, Now where's the dust? You can see it gives a kind of cool look. So I'm gonna learn about how that works. Uh, here we go. Yeah. So this um I know this part this component from within Mozilla Hubs. They use this A-frame component. Uh, all of that is built on A-frame, to my knowledge. Um, to one one degree or another, and um, 
they use the particle fix system. They have it built in natively to hubs, and they use it to like really great effects. So uh, I was hoping I can use it here too. So all I'm doing here is I'll look at some of these examples. Let's look at that dust example. And it looks like they've got it in their distribution folder. Uh, particle a frame particle system component so let's just like create a js a frame particle system component oh i do that all the time misspell the word component i have spent hours of my life trying to figure out why components don't work because i misspelled the word component component there we go JS. We'll add that file. It opens up blank. We'll drop that code in. The toolbar is going to get really mad, or the uh, clipboard gets really mad when you drop that much uh, onto it. And then we'll go back over here. <laughs> I've got Friday fingers. Uh, particle system component.js. Um, that looks like it would be added in now. And let's go back and look at that demo. Um, so we got our script loaded in and particle system present. Yeah, so we'll just like. Actually, I, I'm just gonna steal this entire component from them, or this entire entity from them to make sure this is, I, so I can just drop this in and see if it's working. Cool. So that's just stealing, wow, that is some, that is really cool, the depth of field, like the illusion they're doing there. And my perfectly navigable boat. <laughs> uh, so there's something. I do wish, like, maybe the next thing to do is to make the. Oh, okay. So I have like a little mouse keyboard control system built in here. If you've got the, for anybody who's just joining now, this is the. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Um, this is the site we're looking at the live. Um, results on okay so i kind of like that i'm just going to leave that in there that'll serve as like if i break the particle system at any point like that's how it will will know i broke it through um it like disappearing there but now i'm going to try to make a particle two particle emitters coming up out of these smokestacks here so um let's do that Uh, how do I want to do this? How do I want to do this? Okay, so I'm gonna go down. I'm gonna find boat guy, and I'm gonna make a child entity. So any the way children work, um, anything that it happens to the parent, the like wrapper, um, like this wrapper entity doesn't get its like end until this other entity has like opened and closed within it. Um, so that's like the parent-child relationship. And then anything that happens to the parent entity will also happen to the child. So like here I have like my WASD controls, like this is what makes the boat the thing that moves around in the scene when I hit WASD. And um, any so any WASD like chain, derived changes to the position um, will also happen to the child so like these can these children are going to be the little two smokestack emitters but they need to move accurately every frame with the boat right so that's all we're building here
That's all. Okay, so let's call this ID equals Moki one. There we go. And then I'm gonna grab that. Um, so here's where we'll start learning about the particle system, I think. So these are all of our like flags. And I'm fairly familiar with some of these, like the max age stuff from hubs, where they have a really cool like um, zero code interaction with this that's all sliders within the editor, drop downs of sliders. I, like, what a cool way to explain like particle systems to people who haven't interacted with them, like including myself, like too often. Um, so let's do this. Particle system. So this is like the component menu um, associated with that entity. So we'll go down here to guy again. Oh, here we go. And like, let's go. I don't need this open anymore. Okay, so. This is where these examples are gonna be really useful. Let's look at which of these is most like what we're trying to do. Okay, so this seems like it's coming from one spot. That's really useful. This is more like scene wide maybe. This is like dropping from one spot. That's interesting. Um, let's look at what the dynamics they used in this are. I'm gonna play the editor so that I can kind of infer what's happening. Oh yeah, you can really see like the cube of particles coming down as I move it around. It's like kind of hard to see. Um, so let's, yeah, this is the particle system. So like I can move all the particles up and down. It'll probably just look like dust on your monitor. That's kind of what it looks like for me right now. Um, but let's like really mess with this. So maybe I can, I mean, what's like a crazy color code is like CC0000, is that like red? Yeah, and then let's make the particles way bigger so that people can see them. Um, size, so let's make that four instead of 0.4. There you go, okay, now you can really see these particles as they're falling. So. We got like this cube of particles. Like if I look at it from the top, it makes a square, right? That's um, cause it's like the shape that it's meant to fall within. It's pretty cool, like doing volumetric particle systems within the browser. Like who would have imagined we'd be doing that like 10 years ago, like in true 3D, like absolutely nuts that every, that WebGL and WebGPU soon are like capable of this, like pretty exciting. Um, I close some tabs here. And um, I think this is like just the answer of what we need to do. So let's, if I turn it up, I basically have it built here. So now it looks like these are coming up. Keep the opacity low. Um, what's like a, a gray? Is that like, is, oh man, this is, there's only so many hex codes I know. Um, B, C, B, C, B, C. Is that like a gray? Oh, you know what? Actually, here, this is one of my, I'll give away one of my little hacks. Uh, here, the Canva color palette is like, they have this amazing web tool. Uh, let me just do that. And then like, you can go, um, to a web search engine that respects your privacy and you can do like factory smoke and like find a photo like that.
cool. So you can get like the color codes here. Um, and that's really useful for when you want multiple colors. So like, I'm really, I think that's really interesting that those are the colors that come out of that. That's like smoke is a different range of colors than I often like. I'll go to put it in and I'll go like pure white, pure gray, dark gray, and it won't really make the, like smoke has a lot of constituent colors kind of within it, I think. Um, is there another one I want to like query in the same way? No, we can, I kind of like that. All right, so do something like, where's our editor one? Okay. So like they ask you about color, right? And drop it in like that. And like even just not being consensus gray really helps. The direction seems pretty uh, correct. It's just linear up, right? Opacity, maybe we go like 0.5 opacity. So they're kind of sleep see-through and that gives you a lot of that effect of what that sort of looks like. And then I don't, this whole, oh yeah, so that rain is the slider we really benefited from earlier. Um, smoke seem, or uh, snow seems to make them like want to look like they have drag applied to them. Yeah, the opacity works, cool. And yeah, Canva has a lot of really cool color tools. Um, they have another tool that links off from that color palette tool that's pretty neat. Okay, that rain seems fine, honestly. And then I just don't think these need to be as big, probably. Um, this is cool. So there's like a texture it's applying. Uh, okay, so let's see what the other options for those textures are. Um, cool, so like, Could I? Use something like this in here? And then So it's like, it's weird because you want to like make the, the size of the individual particles bigger, but you aren't really increasing the size of the entity. The entity is like the overall like particle field. So I, there's definitely going to be like a slider for, um, oh yeah, this drag is kind of the thing we were talking about with the snow, but um, there's going to be a slider for like particle size. Um, I also don't think we need this many particles. I'm gonna just like lower this by an order of magnitude to yeah, get the performance back. Yeah, so here's our size. I'll make that. So this is what each piece of snow looks like right now. And then Mm. Yeah, it's kind of kind of good by me for now. So like let's name this Smoky and grab the whole code for it and like throw it into our thing and see. Well, I'm getting <laughs> what is going on with this? Oh, yeah, 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 that's my like native particle effect. I can make the vote look like it's got a mechanical failure on board. That's pretty freaky. I uh, that could be a whole nother. There's that really looks like a ghost ship now. Um, okay, so we got this in. Let's do that. Get rid of this entity because it's redundant. Get rid of the. Particle system, preset rain, duration not applied, color, the color we selected. 
size 10, opacity 0.5. The texture is that texture that we threw in to see if it worked that we might not actually really like, um, but it's okay for now. Particle count. So it seems to have kept all of our sliders. And then we named it Smoky. And we'll call it Smoky 1, really, because we have two smokestacks. Okay, let's go see how that's acting. Yeah, and it freaked out for like kind of obvious reasons because we didn't like scale it or anything to the size thing we have going on. So let's go see our boat. The aura of school spirit. Yeah. SS <laughs> Tuffy SOS. Um. Okay, so. Like try making it a tenth of its size just to see what happens. Oh right, like there's some rotation stuff going on, right? So like it Oh boy, wow my mouse is really freaking it out, like where I'm like kind of manipulating Manipulating the boat instead of manipulating the sh the particle emitter within the boat. So like, um, let's do something like this. Scale equals zero point oh one zero point oh one. 0 0.001. Oh, and you can just see that massive emitter there. Okay, uh, let's go back to the drawing board. I think we might have figured out a lot about how that particle emitter worked but I don't think the idea of just plugging in our sliders from the other location is particularly good. Um, so let's empty out the particle system information and make the scale one, 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 delete that. Um, and like, is there a way we want to make it visible in the, like give it a debug kind of. Um, cool, so we're back to our, our ghostly aura. Um, I guess we can learn some stuff from that ghostly aura because it's like way more visible than our gray one was. Um, so we'll go under boat guy, select smoky. Let's play so we see it. So that's what we actually had happening there. That's kind of interesting, actually. So uh, we'll do something like, oh, that's cool. Man, I really should have read the documentation, huh? So like the color field describes a col particle's color. This property is a value over lifetime property, meaning an array of values can be given to describe specific value changes over a particle's lifetime. Isn't that cool? Um, is the scale in pixels, uh, it might as well be. So it's in meters, um, but like they're virtual meters. So they're, they might as well just be unit. Um, yeah, they like define, arbitrarily define what a meter is within the virtual space. Whoever came up with the system would probably get mad at me for saying arbitrary, but, um, yeah, it's all real. It is internally relative though. Um, so that's, let's go grab our series of colors. So you can do like that comma. Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. I guess smoke goes from dark to light, right? So like do that comma, that comma. 
So I went from like charade to bison hide, and we'll stop by tobacco brown on the way. Okay, preset, we like that rain preset, right? And then um, size, we like the smaller size. Okay. And we needed to uh, it invert the rotation in the Y. This is a Y up system. Yeah, upside down rain, exactly. Um, so like minus 180, I guess. Let's see if that, that still looks like it's coming down to me. So it might actually be in the Z. Yeah, upside down rain, it's happening. Um, and then we'll call this like 0.25 because we're talking about at this point we want the column of smoke to be smaller not the individual smoke particles okay let's make sure it moves around with our boat it does um, we need the scale in the Y to be much taller we like we can do like 15 meters of <laughs> I mean, it is, it's an improvement, but that's, uh, that looks weird. It's like very fast, right? It's like full steam ahead at all times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's a reason I didn't stick the camera like on the uh, from the perspective of whoever's driving. Um, whoa, yeah, it's kind of freaky at this point. Um, let's slow down that smoke. Um, actually, let's um, let's try to reflect our changes within the actual change. So let's. Oh, no, actually. Oof, I'm feeling that performance hit here. Um, a lot of particles in the scene. Okay, I just pushed new changes. So if anybody uh, refreshes, you should see what I see now. And then... Hit that, hit that. Um, next age one. Okay, let's make it so these can't age as much. <laughs> it's like uh, one of those fire suppression boats that you see. Just like a hose going off of there. Yeah, so I don't know if that's exactly what we want. It does look like the age is happening now. Like they can only get so old. So let's um, just cut it in tenth to see if I'm right about that. Oh, it doesn't like that because they can't age long enough to be able to make it to the top of their column. Um, so maybe we call this like five in the Y instead. Yep, there you go. And then we, uh, these probably can be a little less. So like 0 0.15, 0 0.15. Okay, that's like getting there. That's getting there. Um, 
How do we do that color define thing that we were looking at earlier? It is just a comma, right? Yeah, I don't really, I'm not really seeing that. I gotta, gotta admit, I do not really see the, those colors. Um, oh, I put spaces, could that, could that be part of my problem? I'm still not seeing the color change over lifetime. Yeah, I don't know, is anybody else seeing that? Uh, let's, this, oh, velocity value. So no velocity in the X, no velocity in the Z, 75 units of velocity in the Y. Yeah, you don't see the colors either. Okay, uh, let's maybe do like a 10th of that speed. And the time has come, I think, to mess with this universal particle system. Let's cut that to like a hundredth of the total particles. We're getting there. The color change would be cool. I think that's the next thing we work on here because, um, yeah, for this is a lot of progress for an hour. I'm pretty happy about that so far. Um, but yeah, let's first try, let's try to move the column into place. Then we'll duplicate the column so we have it, we can see what it looks like with two next to each other because it might be kind of disorienting. Um, and then we will get the color change working, I think. And we'll just mess around with that slider. So I think about 15 more minutes will work on the smoke. Um, cool. So control alt i I'll let it play. I'll go to the smoke. And here's where so it's only got one. Position variable. So let's like try messing with that and see what happens. Position, oh man, okay. So here's where. Um, just so we can do this within a spot where I'll be able to easily screen share it. So here's that position that I just copied that I did in the editor. Find Smokey, here's Smokey. Hey, that looks pretty good. I also want sound now though. Nice. Okay, let's add a second one in there. Uh, so now we're really gonna need to, I, I think I lost the smoky name. Like I don't, I bet it won't show up if I go in editor. No, how does it know it's called Smoky? Okay. Oh, weird. Yeah, it is in here. This is why you uh, make your code readable. There we go. And then 
smoky one shouldn't get duplicated what is this the did this entity relate to so like this closes that this closes that this closes that if this closes this, this will close the identity that opens before. I don't see what that is. So it's before this. I don't think it's closing anything. I think this is just a superfluous entity close. Let's see if that broke anything. Did not. Okay, yeah, that was just like extra code. Um, let's turn Smoky One into smoke, or one of the Smoky Ones into Smoky Two. I agree. Yeah, I think um, we can test it here, but I think the having the second smokestack is not going to be disorienting now that we've got it under control. Uh, Smoky Two, and. I would like to think that if I slide this number over, we're gonna no. That's that does not do what I think it does. The X Y Z is messing with me because we like inverted the the total orientation. So like I think that it's working in like the inverse. So control I. I'm letting I'm pressing that play button so we have like the live editor every time because I, I find it very hard to kind of gather what these particle effects are doing if they're not up and running. Um, let's Looks about right to me. I'm gonna grab Smoky too because I think it's an improvement. We'll learn our lesson. We'll make that readable. And then, you know, just a little trickery here. We'll make these different numbers so that you get a little bit of different uh, effect. So like, Pretty cool. Um, let's take a little break from particle effects and I wanna add a sound um, here. Um, cool. So Google has like all of the sounds that they use within Android are open to be used on the uh, through Google Assistant app. Um, so like let's ambience ambiances. Let's look if there's one that kind of speaks to what we need. This is a highway near the waterfront, distant, or just near the waterfront. Getting more automotive than I'm seeing, getting water. Um, do a control F for water. Hmm. A lot for O2. 
ocean. Here we go, this is what I was looking for. I like this one. I'm gonna apply this to the um, to the lighthouse. I'm just gonna do a quick conversion of this. Turn this into an MP3 because Web Audio API can't use OGGs to my knowledge. Um, I actually recently found out it can use M it can use WAVs. Um, so we'll just do that quick. Right? Yeah, I figured it would be good background noise. And uh, by putting it, well, so we can find another one too. But what's cool is like we could make a bit of a procedural sort of soundscape based on like having some things be stationary sounds and others relate to the movement of the boat. So like. awesome that's gonna be our uh what does this sound like oh it's happening <laughs> Okay, let's down. I, I like that as like our our soundscape. So save the ship bow. We're gonna save that old creek sound. Throw these in here to get our conversions done. Sorry if I shouldn't be using this converter on stream. Uh, don't be mad at me. Um, convert. The sounds of the SS Tuffy. Yeah, we just need like if somebody wants to put together some um, some shanties for us, we could probably use those. It'll increase morale above the ship. The ship. Um, there you go. I got all that. Let's throw all of that into our assets. Oh wait, I did something wrong there. Um, yeah, I dropped an OGG in there when I didn't mean to. Delete that. So we got ship bell, we've got wood creek, we've got waves crashing. Okay. So within here, uh, I'm just gonna refresh this page quick. So we can like. You know, we're working in a 3D environment. We can like make these global sounds that won't change, but in my opinion, you're kind of wasting the ability of spatial sound at that point. 
So I like to anchor sound elements to specific stuff in the scene. Like if you're just thinking about how sound works as a physical process within real reality, like no sounds don't come out of nowhere. Like we, for light, we have this whole discussion of like, oh, well, light can, light sure physically does have to come from a source, but we live underneath a sun. And so the sun is so large a source of light that it creates this thing we call ambient light, which is that our entire planet is within the beam of light from the, you know, 360 times 360 times 360, like a light array that is the sun, right? Like no human has ever been outside the sun's light and which is crazy to think about, but um, you, you've been blocked, you know, humans have been blocked from the sun by the earth, but like you, we've never, there's no meaningful like human environment that where the sun's light isn't there. So we have like directional lights, like there's a light pointing at my face right now to make me look good. Um, and that's like a very directional light, you know, it's like pointing from the webcam at me. Um, and there's like a, something that acts like a room scale ambient light that's above me right now, this fluorescent light. But if I walk outside, I have an ambient light and a directional light. They're both coming from the sun. There's no sound equivalent of that, right? Like there's no sound that we just like accept is an ambient sound everywhere. And where it comes from is like not meaningfully like a, uh, emitter of sound waves. So like you can anchor all these sounds to things. A long way to go for that point but i do think it's kind of interesting how like these sensory products uh actually um are really different it's called the sound waves um and i'm gonna grab that link Find our lighthouse, fella. Block that code out to make sure it's what's actually operating in here. Then what's problematic about this is I can't move my like head in there to um, make sure it's actually playing so let's make its max distance really high oh i hear it it's very quiet but i hear it um we could i guess increase its volume is like a lazy way to do this So we can hear it now. That's cool. Grab a little lighthouse fella again. I don't hear it anymore. Weird. Why did we lose it? Wanna refresh the page? Um it's still Ooh, I didn't change any code. I like the idea of anchoring sounds to objects in the scene too, yeah. Um, I think when we put something on the boat and you can like hear the sound moving ear to ear, it's gonna really like be the payoff. Um, so. If it goes 
goes away as soon as. All right, I give in. I'll read the, I'll read the doc. Uh, Ethernet.io sound. Um, on autoplay needs to be true. I thought I had that. Loop is true. Autoplay is true. Source is set. Loop true. Yeah. Um, I do think that. This is working well enough, we can get rid of that. Make this readable. See so here, that loop comes around again. It doesn't seem to. It seems like it wants to like shut itself off every loop. Just discouraging. So autoplay true. Oh, sorry, that was that I changed the code and so the page refreshed. But the point stands that does not seem it's like it's doing anything until like I go in and edit it every time. Um, hmm. Autoplay true. Um, maybe we'll make Does it help if we actually make that null? Um, hmm. Well, I'm glad to see other stuff isn't breaking. Like it's not like stopping the lighthouse from rendering into the scene. Um, I guess we could use the asset manager for this. Um, so like I could load these as in, in as, um, asset items. So I could do like a asset item ID, ID equals waves, um, crash, um, source equals, um, whatever it's going to be, and then I'll get the closing to that. And I like preload auto, because that'll wait for, make the scene wait to load them, because of how the asset manager works. I'll make three copies of that. I'll name them uh, Ford Creek. And what was even our last sound? Uh, ship bell. Um, then I'll go over to assets. I'll grab those. Ship bell popped up first in my field of vision. So throw that in. Wood Creek next. If you told me to spell Wood Creek, I would not spell Creek with an A, probably. Um, and then waves crashing. Okay, and then it's a good time to test that our asset system is working, I guess, while other stuff is still kind of broken. Um, so I believe all I need to do for that is uh, call this waves crash is that what I actually called that waves crash I'll go over here 
wasn't working before. Okay, that's now not working. Maybe I need to put quotes around. Oops, crash. Why is my asset manager not working? Let's look. This is the fun spot. Fun spot. You hit an hour into the uh, hour into your coding session, you'll start really hitting some uh, some bugs. So that's good. Hmm. How does this want to work? Oh, I do need quotes around it. Okay. Oh, oh, I'm like surprised I haven't totally broken the lighthouse because I'm putting this in the wrong spot. Right, like source that doesn't actually go there. I think so. I'll refresh that. Yeah, it's still appearing. Source, it's the sound source, right? It's not the like model source. And also, that no longer is going to need quotes. Still, I'm not getting, yeah, right. Uh, I'm still not getting the sound yet. Here's our lighthouse fella. Okay, so most stuff's working. Oh, 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 oh. Stupid. That's a that's just a dumb mistake. Here we go. Okay. Press play. Still not getting that sound though. Let's um, do just a quick check to make sure I haven't broken it in a different way while trying to fix this. I'm gonna replace my asset manager thing with the actual link. It'd be really funny if it had just started working there, but press play. Mm, now I think I've actually broken the sound. Um, let's do some control Z's. Oh, so I have this in twice. Weird. So I was defining what that model should be two times. Um, but sound is still not working for me here. Let's do a rewind because we had this working better a little while ago.
Love that rewind feature. It's basically like having a revision um, history for like your own project there. You can just revert too quickly. Okay, let's just rebuild this in here. Um, we can remake those asset items so that they're using the asset manager the whole time. Wave crash source equals Oh man, I really, I really did uh, rewind. Let's do these one by one then. Uh, wave crash, we'll drop that in there. So we'll upload. Okay, so, oh uh, yeah, there's lots of weird stuff that I inserted in there for kind of no reason. <laughs> um, let's try writing this like using the actual component guide. Um, so I'll take their example here and I'll stick it in as a component. Sound source, uh, Here's where I want to do wave crash, and I believe it was singular wave this time. Yep, wave crash. Um, and no other kind of details about the sound um, other than if we want autoplay to be true, and uh, I'll even loop I want to be true. Loop defaults to false, so I want loop to go to true. Um, so we'll do semicolon loop colon true. And uh, alas, let's um just see if maybe not using asset manager will hurry this up for us. Oh, we also thought we needed to increase volume, right? Um, so that's just volume is the command for that. So or the flag. And what five seemed to be working, I think. So we'll do that. A mystery to me. I can't figure it out. Let's um let's try that bell because then we can try like a so got this bell sound called that boat guy. Um give it Sound equals source that on autoplay true loop true volume five. Okay, so our loop is working. Let's move it away. Ooh, okay, so 
Our spatial sound is working when we move on to another example. In the right ear, the oh, left ear. Okay, so it's inverted. That's a little weird. Um, let's keep moving it away. Yeah, I, I mean, like, tell me what you think, chat, but that, that seems like it is exactly what we want that effect to work like. Let's take it out to its logical extreme and over the horizon. I forget if I put like a sprint button in here. I don't think I did. Okay. Um, and then if you need multiple sounds, um, Let's just do this quick. Let's do that. We'll do sound two applied to the same item. We will drag our Wood Creek into the asset folder, it's hosted now. We can replace this URL with it. We'll just let it like behave the same, but maybe we'll make it like, the creaking wood should be like a fraction as loud as a bell, right? So like maybe we make that so that you'll only hear it really close up. We still have this weird phenomenon where you need to play it in editor. Mm. So it does not seem to like multiple sounds. So how can you get around that? Um, do you make it a separate entity? Is that the answer? So like, the same way we made the smokestacks into their own thing. We could like do that with the, whoa. See my trick here? So it's another use of the childing. So we don't actually, won't need one entity to have multiple sound components. We will simply have increase the number of children. Why does this not want to be named? Uh, because Oh, because that never got finished. There we go. Um, 
Okay, I can dig it. That looks like it should work. I'll do that same stupid hack. Are we getting the spatialization now? Let's look. I think this goes super far away. I don't know if we are. He claims these are positional. That's really not accurate. <laughs> Bring this really close to the camera right now. That's kind of cool. That like speaks to the two ways that those sounds act, right? Like. The creaking is actually probably like an exponential, like as you're, you, you know, you gotta move your ear pretty close to floorboards to hear them creak relatively, right? But a bell, like it's really loud when you're next to it. It's really loud when you're far, like very far away from it. It's definitely not an exponential fall off, you know, because of the properties of resonance and stuff. First here. Yeah, good enough, good enough, right? Um, let's grab that sound component here. I kind of liked how that worked. And just make sure it still works here. Um, okay, and then Maybe we need like a click event or something in the scene to make the audio um, behave the way that we expect it to. Um, so we'll do like a title card quick. Um, so in the past, let's... Um, Go make a title card. Um, don't worry about what this is. Don't even worry about what this is. Maybe we'll just do a new one. So like, do a box, throw it in there, make it like 180 units wide. Find some happy number for this. I know there's a way to to see this number as I do it, but. Go back to our, um, actually, here's a, here's a cool way we could do this. Do like snipping tool. I'll do a snip of the full screen there. I'll save that. And I'll throw that snip into our asset folder, which will give it a URL. I 
grab that URL. We'll, oh, I guess I didn't actually need to give it a URL, but I'll upload that. Cool, so we've got our like color scheme for the overall um, little experience here. That's also a nice little preview image. Um, for this, there's definitely a way to, oh yeah, here we go. Oh, now I'll use that image we had before. Um, oh, come on. Drop a 2D or 3D file, isn't that? Nope, doesn't like that. Okay, that's fine. Um, let's grab that other color here. We're really just making something quick that's clickable. Hmm, I'm not sure I quite got what it happened. I think maybe that tamarind color. The reason I do a snip of the screen for stuff like this is because um, the color you choose in the editor. Oh, another thing that was slowing my browser down might be that I was generating particles in all these background windows. Um, is because in a like three D environment, the light um, is going to change the like observed color of things, even if you gave them a set matte color. Um, so yeah, I like to go and actually grab what the color codes are that it's appearing as rather than like I theoretically thought they'd come in as. And then that's cool, but I want to bring its brightness up just a little. Yeah, no, do that. Great, and this, I don't really like that color right now for that. Let's. Or did I do the light or the dark blue on the back? Yeah, so I'll do the dark blue on this like insert. And this is just like a geometric color for or a geometric shape for like the sake of having it there. Um, probably throw like another um, thing in here like this diamond. I kind of like the color of that, but um, I mentioned earlier the other Canva color palette tool. There's like a color calculator as well. Um, so like, I like this background color that I'll get the complementary but I want like the tetradic and then I can like grab some colors here to, like,
Cool. We'll move that up here just to give a little symmetry. We will grab that color. I like this orange. That's actually, I would never have thought that that would be in the Tetradica right there. And then. And then I just want a little more text right here. It says like, Think something like that, maybe, and then we'll do like little sans my. I don't like that. We don't like serifs in our brand. Let's just do that. That's fine. And Okay, do that, export, GLTF. Gonna rename it quick and call it a Tuffy title card. Move that into our assets folder. make like a um, so the idea here is we're trying to make like a sp splash card that's making people do a click event so that we can test if sound uh, will work once we've done one click event so like control alt I just try to like put an entity in the field of view, let's call this like splash card, haha, <laughs> get it, um, give it a geometry, something like there, oh, I guess we could actually just like Give it that a uh, GLTF model right now if we already hosted it. So got that here. Sorry, I'm quiet. I'm just trying to uh, get these sliders right. It's not look like that's quite in our field of view, but it's getting close. Can you make buttons stationary on screen? Yeah, uh, that's. I'm trying to basically turn this into a button. Um, you, and buttons are like 3D elements. It's like, you know, in HTML, traditionally like in 2D HTML, we're used to buttons being like, by their very nature, they are buttons, right? But in 
in A-Frame and in 3JS, I think the underlying library generally, every entity is like, you know, to use a plant word, like totipotent, like it's an entity by its nature. And then the behaviors of it are given by the component, you know, the, the C in the ECS system, the entity component um, system. Um, so like anything can be a button, you know, the, the boat could be a button that makes it do a specific thing um, rather than just like it, something is made to only be a button. That's all it can be. Um, I like that spot for that. Let's copy that. Hopefully that's gonna, I really don't wanna have to do that again. Let's make sure the code actually stuck. Um, that sure seems right to me. So let's move that on over. We're gonna make it. We're gonna get this button working, okay. Um, we'll just like throw it in here. I don't know if that's really best form, but we'll just like throw it there. Let's make sure when we refresh, it appears. It does not. That's brutal. Oh no! I didn't check to see that the position came over with it. Bummer. Um, I think rotation was ninety zero zero position something else. <laughs> Zooming out. Here we go. Here we go. Where are we? got to be visible. Okay, there we go. I can't quite see where the camera rig is. Oh, yeah, I can see the camera rig there, so I could just move this up into view. Oh, my God, I just clicked the wrong button. Boy. I love that look of it like coming up from the murky depths though. Is getting a little bit mad at me here. Yeah, like sunken treasure. A treasure is like totally what I was going for at that star, so I'm glad to hear that comes through.
there's a component that can make objects look um, have always face the camera. Um, but like if I had a little bit of time, is probably what I would just like make it live update itself. Uh. Man, that uh, the location of that refresh button is really is really killing me, huh? So it's like right behind the camera right now. So if I move it like just a little up, it's gonna be like perfect. And then we liked the idea of it being sunken into the shader just a little. So I want its X and Y to be bigger. Okay, we'll call that good. Uh, let's grab that. We will put it in this splash card spot. Cool, and then we will give it a little bit of reactivity. doing uh, animation. So it's going to be like a position animation. So like you can make this pretty easy on yourself by working out from what it needs to do. So like pos property position, uh, it'll be from its current position to, uh, so like 2.12 uh, I don't know, we make it go like way out of sight in the Y axis, so like to six. Um, and then to, uh, you guess I can make it fly up over our head if we make it like one. Um, we'll make that take two seconds to do, and we'll not loop. Um, sorry, on click, uh, which probably actually requires us to put a raycaster in. we can do in like the scene. Um, are we done? I got 60 seconds. I can do this. Uh, 
scene, background color. Um, I actually could go change that background color, but it's fine. Um, so do like cursor equals ray origin mouse fuse false ray caster equals objects dot and I like uh, dot uh, splat So that's happening. We just got to build the event system into this. But I think that might be a problem for another stream. So this is what we got today. Let's uh, force it to work. So we got little boat, little boat, and drive around. Here we go, over the horizon, into the weekend. Uh, I th hope everybody had fun today. Uh, if you have any questions about anything you saw um, within today's uh, not too explanation heavy stream, uh, I am gonna drop my contact informa information here in the chat. Um, Feel free to get in touch. I love talking to anybody who has enthusiasm for these topics or wants to learn more about them. Um, and the internet's still pretty cool, everybody, as long as we make it that. Um, so have a wonderful weekend. Stay safe. See you all soon. Bye.